Hello everyone, this is Ty from Time Carolina Weekly Moments and I started not to want to do this post because it's going to be angry and it's not something I really think I was ready to talk about but what the hell, why not? So if you've watched my page, um, I told you guys on December 20th I was diagnosed with stage 1BI adenocarcinoma of the cervix which is cervical cancer. But I didn't explain how I developed cervical cancer and how I got there. So I'll give you the quickest rundown that I can to hopefully help somebody else not get to where I'm at. So if you just joined, I'm going to explain how I developed uh, cervical cancer. So the first time I was seen, I was on active duty by a private doctor. And this is probably going to be backwards. So it was November 16th. 2016 and I was seen by a private doctor and I told them that I had pelvic pain I told them that I had some other things going on but I definitely felt like something was wrong and I had an MRI and they did a sonogram and they found something but no one really contacted me back no one actually said anything and this is by this physician right here you can see that there's something on my chart no one ever called me back and this is pelvic pain. So no one ever said anything. So I'm thinking, all right, well, it must be nothing. It can't be anything because no doctor said anything. So I'm seen again on this date, January 5th, 2017. I'm admitted to the hospital because at this point I have severe anaphylaxis. This is January 5th, 2017. I'm thinking something has to be wrong, but then again, a doctor doesn't say anything. No one calls me and tells me other than I have a cyst. So I think nothing of it, but I still had the same symptoms. I have extreme pelvic pain, and if you don't know, all women have vaginal discharge. It's not that bad, but mine was severe, but nothing came of it. So I go back to the doctor January 10th, and I tell them the same thing. I have pelvic pain. I'm experiencing a lot of issues. I don't know what's going on. And they tell me, you probably need to be tested for STDs. And I'm like, okay. So I get tested for every STD in the book. Nothing. And I get tested again and I keep getting tested and I keep telling these people it's not an STD I don't know what's going on but everyone keeps dismissing me and to be honest with you guys I try not to make this racial I really am trying not to but as a black female telling a physician and telling them my claims I was dismissed constantly over and over and over again about what was going on with me and now I'm at this point so a few months later I'm seen again October 19th, 2017, I go to a private doctor and I say, I'm having pelvic pain. I'm experiencing this type of discharge. It doesn't seem like anything. And the doctor looks to me and he says, I think it's just an early infection. It's really hard to kill. He gives me a 14 day prescription for metronidazole, which is an antibiotic also known as flagell to treat bacterial vaginosis. And I'm thinking, okay. So he says nothing's wrong, progressing as expected. This was this date, October 19th, 2017. I was seen by a gynecologist and asked him, is this something more? And he tells me, nothing is wrong with me. I'm gonna go ahead and discharge you. You're fine to go home. At this point, I have a terrible, terrible reaction. My skin is literally peeling off. I'm experiencing extreme fatigue, diarrhea, nausea. I lose 10 pounds and I don't know what's going on with me. So then I'm seen December 1st, 2017 again by another doctor and they tell me we're sorry but we don't do your services that day and I'm thinking okay we don't do my services that day so I come back and they give me another seven day prescription for metronidazole, which is again an antibiotic to treat bacterial vaginosis, also known as the, the specific name of the prescription is flagell. So then I'm seen December 13th, 2017. This is literally 13 days later. And at this point, I'm more than sick. I'm nauseous. I can't keep everything down. I'm sweating. I'm extremely fatigued. I can't stay up. And I'm a full-time student, a part-time worker at a medical clinic. And I figured it has to be because I'm tired. So they tell me, don't worry about it. We believe that this is just bacterial vaginosis. We can see that you have a polyp in there, but it's probably nothing. And so I expected it to be nothing. He said, most likely in most cases, we'll just be able to remove it and you'll go on. I still have nausea, fatigue, 
I'm experiencing the same symptoms of pelvic pain and again it's dismissed. And then on December 20th, I get a phone call from my, position, my physician and he says, I'm really sorry, but I'm sorry we've been playing phone tag back and forth, but I need to tell you something and I think it's best that it comes from me. And I'm thinking, okay, what is he about to tell me? And he says, we found some cancer and I'm really sorry and I'll be praying for you. And that was the last thing he told me over the phone was that you have some cancer. So I've been seeing all of these dates. One, two, three, four, five, six times by three different doctors. And they all tell me that nothing's wrong with me. And then on the final day where I refuse to leave, December 20th, I'm diagnosed with stage 1BI adenocarcinoma of the cervix. Not only if they had actually paid attention to me, that this could have been simply cleared with the conization, but now I have to undergo a radical tracheolectomy where they'll have to take my bladder and flip it upside down. They're then going to have to take my uterus and flip that upside down. They're going to have to cut out the middle sections of my cervix, replace it, and sew it all back together with a four-week recovery. Not only with a four-week recovery, I had to get out of school, which means that I don't get rent because I'm paid by the VA. And with this, I'm in possibly 10% chance to have a radical hysterectomy, meaning I will never have children if that comes back. Not only did my cancer spread a little bit forward, it spread so far back that I tested positive for endo, endocervical tissue with extreme invasive carcinoma. So I've been seen six times from doctors who dismissed me and now I have a six hour surgery February 27th when I'm supposed to have AT, which is annual training for National Guardsmen this year, and I'm supposed to be taking my MCAT within the next few months. So what I'm telling you right now is don't let them dismiss you. I've been to the doctor six times telling them I had the same symptoms and not one person took the time to assist me and tell me that perhaps you need this testing. No one invested enough time, and I'm not trying to make this racial, but there's a very large health disparity amongst minorities. And I felt like if I was a married woman who'd gone in there like, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant, I don't know what's going on, maybe somebody would have paid attention to me. Because now I have an 85% chance of living because of a doctor's gross negligence. And I do have, oh, someone just said, please start a GoFundMe page. I do have a GoFundMe page to everyone who has donated. I truly appreciate you guys. But I did not want to let this go left unsaid. I had these, ex these problems for a year. And so this is what I'll leave with. My gynecological oncologist set me down. And she says, your tumor has been there between six months to a year. And I was seen... I was seen November 16th, 2016, January 4th, January 5th, 2017. I was seen October 19th, 2017, December 1st, 2017, and December 13th, 2017. So this all could have been avoided if the doctor would have just listened and done what he needed to do. But that's what I'll let you guys know. Go out and get your pap smears. Get the pap smear. I don't care if the doctor tells you you don't need it get it anyway. I had one. I had a pap smear. I've been tested for everything. Every time I went to the doctor, they asked me, did I know my sexual partners? Was I sexually promiscuous? I've been tested for everything. And the one thing that they didn't do was tell me that I was at risk for cervical cancer. And now I'll have a six hour procedure where they have to move my organs out of the way and I'll leave with a catheter. I'll be down for four weeks and I'm going to lose about $7,000. So... Go get it done. I'm still optimistic. You know, I'm hanging in there. I'm a fighter and I'm a big shit talker. So everyone knows that I'm not going to, I'm just not going to say something. But I do think you have to be in charge of your, your own health. You have to be your own ride or die. Because had it been left up to this physician, I actually would have died. I would have died.
And I'm just thankful for God for me being a fighter because had it not been so, I wouldn't be able to make this video right now. So this is Ty from Time Carolina Weekly Moments. This was my experience on how I actually um, developed stage 1B eye cerebral cancer or adenocarcinoma of the cervix. I'm still applying to medical school in August and I'm still going to do everything I need to do. But if he thinks that this is where it stops, he's wrong. See y'all later.